Being the only Hyatt branded hotel in Athens, it certainly has its perks, but it would seem that most of those perks are for the hotel, not you. Join me for this quick tour of the newly expanded Grand Hyatt, and welcome to Athens. Before we get into it, let me welcome you to the channel if you're new here. My name is Kevin and I am the Flip Flop Traveler. I'm here to give you honest content about flights, hotels, and cruises. I paid for this trip out of pocket and the price that I paid is in the description below. Hyatt had no knowledge that I'd be filming today and I didn't receive any compensation from them. Everything in this video is my personal opinion based on my unique experience. The rest, I'll let speak for itself. Let's get into it. I just disembarked a Virgin Voyages cruise in the port of Piraeus, an easy drive from Athens. Since Virgin's disembarkation policies are amazing, I was able to get off the ship at 11 a.m., and so I ended up arriving at the hotel around noon after a very long taxi queue at the port. As I mentioned, this is the only Hyatt branded property in the city. There is one other small luxury hotel group property in Athens that you can book through Hyatt though. Note that this is a quick tour, not necessarily comprehensive. The facade of the hotel is a mix of newish and newer. What you see now is newer, and this is newish. The hotel originally opened in 2018, and nearly immediately, they began building a massive expansion, which then opened in 2023, bringing the total room count from a sizable 321 to a massive 548. Now, this is the largest Grand Hyatt in Europe. The lobby and attached lobby bar and lounge are modern, stylish, and ever so slightly grand, befitting of a city center property. There is one itsy bitsy problem though. Checking in and checking out, or just walking. Astutely noted by One Mile at a Time in their review of the hotel, quote, Based on some of the reviews out there, you'd assume that this hotel is a less luxurious version of Guantanamo Bay." End quote. I've seen horror stories about hours-long lines to check into other hotels before. They were hard to imagine, to be honest, until I experienced it here. When I arrived, the line wrapped through the entire lobby with guests and luggage spilling out literally in every direction. Despite doubling the size of the hotel, this lobby area has remained the same size. Not to mention that there were five check-in reception desks and one concierge desk, but only three reception desks were actually serving the line. I spent an hour and five minutes in line. As expected, the room was not ready and there was no system for alerting guests when the room would be ready. So I was told to come back to the front desk at 3 p.m. I'll note that they could have just told everyone that was checking in, don't get in line until three o'clock. I headed up to the mezzanine since I did not want to drop my bags considering I was watching how long it took for other guests to retrieve them when they needed them. One floor up, just in front of the club lounge, there are two desks to form a small and quiet business center if you need a place to escape the chaos. By 2.30, the line hadn't gotten much shorter, so I decided to get on it again, assuming it would take at least 30 minutes to get to the desk, which was correct. This time it took 40 minutes. Reception and baggage aren't the only things you're going to be waiting for though, since these elevators were likely ill-equipped to handle the original hotel's capacity, let alone the new combined hotel. It didn't help that there was always one out of service. During this process, there were two near physical altercations which happened right around me, one for cutting the line for reception, two spots ahead of me, and the other for someone refusing to get out of the elevator so a couple could ride together. I've honestly never seen such a big group of pissed off people before. So far, not so great. By the way, there are only two food venues on site and the first one was the lobby bar that you saw already. Heading to my room now through what were often some pretty hectic looking hallways. I reserved a plunge pool room. That's actually the reason why I chose this hotel. When I made the booking, the photos online were exactly the same as the normal rooms on Hyatt's website. Before booking, I emailed the hotel to ask for photos of the room, and they replied some days later that they didn't have any photos yet. 
I later called them before booking to ask if the plunge pool was truly on a balcony as stated, or if it was just a ground floor room somehow. I honestly didn't know how plunge pool rooms could work in a city hotel. They confirmed that they were on balconies. It'll probably come as no surprise that the first room I was assigned was on the ground floor. I called and after a 35 minute wait was reassigned a few floors higher. As chaotic as the lobby was, with no key card access for all the stairwells, there was no way I was staying in the ground floor. I'll show you how it looked at the end of this tour. As you can see, the room is modern but feels empty. Like they forgot to add all of the decorations and accessories and the quality of materials used, especially anything wood, was subpar for a five-star hotel. The bedding and linens looked like they were used. I'm not saying they were, but they were just all very sloppy. On second thought, may maybe they were actually used. Oh, and the espresso pods were chargeable. I'll let you have a look around. The bathroom, including the vanity area and the shower basin, both felt a little grimy, with various residues left behind. For all I know, it's residue from a cleaning product, but it just wasn't great to feel or look at. And here's the balcony of the plunge pool room. So I don't like that it's an interior view. I didn't know that's what I was getting, but in retrospect, I didn't ask that either when I was booking. So I'll take responsibility for that one. Note that all of the plunge pool rooms are interior facing. You can see one of four guest pools down there in the courtyard. There's one down there, two on the roof, and one indoor pool at the spa. This is how the admittedly larger ground floor room terrace was laid out. It did have a nice ambience at night though, but what I really wasn't expecting was the next morning. I planned to head to breakfast and was going to film the rooftop pools and things around there after eating. But this absolutely magnificent sunrise and infinity pool with views of the entire city in the background, well, they had other plans for me. Here's your friendly reminder to click that like button, subscribe to the channel, and share this video with friends and family. Those are truly the easiest ways, all free for you, to help the channel grow. If you'd like to support me further, my Patreon is linked in the description below. Thanks very much in advance. This is definitely one of the more stunning rooftop pools that I've seen in a while. There are plenty of loungers and chairs around, but there's a distinct lack of sun covering. I suppose if you want shade, you're meant to go to the pool in the courtyard. Perhaps that's where you go for the clean chairs as well. Let's look at where we are, just to the south of truly central Athens on one of the main thoroughfares of the city. The Grand Hyatt is a 30 minute drive from the airport and around a 15 minute drive from the cruise port of Piraeus, making this a popular choice for pre and post cruise nights. Zooming in, we can see that the street that the hotel is on is in fact a six lane highway with slip access roads on either side. 
and around a 7 to 10 minute drive from the Acropolis or the Plaka neighborhood. Walking around the area is safe, but it's not really a walking around type of area. The part of the building on the left is the new addition, the new pool in the bottom left corner not having been filled yet. If you want to know the best time to visit Athens or more driving times and transport costs, this is the graphic for you. On to the breakfast buffet at the Grand Restaurant. The space has two levels, but they seat in the lower level first. Upstairs where we are now is the same spread of food as downstairs. If you head down to the description, you'll find my next five videos to come out, as well as other bits and pieces like the soundtrack titles featured in this video. On your way down there, don't forget to subscribe. I release full-length videos every Thursday and Saturday. You can see the plunge pool rooms over there if you look across from this side. I should also mention that despite all of the chaos in the lobby, there is in fact a new lobby in the new part of the hotel as well, which is connected on the ground floor, but it's not accessible from outside and is not staffed. I think it's only used for functions. Overall, a spectacular example of a hotel putting profit miles above the guest experience. This could be a nice large hotel. I generally really like Grand Hyatt's, and the thought of a plunge pool room in Athens is really nice. But this one is unfortunately managed by people that don't understand how to cope with busy periods, or worse, simply don't care to try and improve. If it was a fantastic rate, I'd consider staying here again for one or two nights if I was arriving and departing during off-peak hours only. Otherwise, it is a hard pass. I do hope you enjoyed this quick tour today. If you did, please be sure to click the like button and subscribe with notifications on so you don't miss out on any of my twice weekly videos. I'll see you next time on a Singapore Airlines 777 from Singapore to Tokyo Haneda. Oh, and as always, thanks for watching until the end.